busy street or on a slippery slide. I think to say that we're offshoring is completely false. We're growing in Asia and we're creating new jobs and we're doing it from a base that's a very successful airline started in Australia. Pilots, licensed engineers and warehouse staff are all taking action against the airline. Now Qantas veteran Captain Stephen Anderson claims he's been stood down while in transit in Hong Kong. After 31 years of loyal service to this company, to be treated this way, it doesn't surprise me, but unfortunately it disappoints me. It's part of union action over pay and conditions at Qantas. We don't want to disrupt the travelling public. We're trying to stop outsourcing of our jobs to foreign and overseas um, entities and protect the future of our younger generation and younger generation of pilots coming up. Jetstar declined to be interviewed for this story, but in a statement tonight said there are clear limitations on hours. Jetstar has clearly established duty limitations that are consistently applied regardless of where our cabin crew are based. Jetstar's Thai-based flight attendants get paid a base wage of 258 Australian dollars a month. Each hour they fly, they get another $7 an hour plus allowances. They don't get paid for sick leave and have half the annual leave of their Australian colleagues. While on annual leave, they get paid less than normal. That $7 Australian dollars an hour on top of their base wage becomes just $9 a day. I think a lot of the claims are completely false and we completely deny them. I mean, the claims about slave labour and the claims that uh, we pay these people a pittance. I mean, our salaries in Thailand, for instance, we're paying these people twenty to $30,000 a year in Thailand. And that, that ranks in the top few percent of salaries in that country. Jetstar's Thai-based flight attendants get paid a base wage of 258 Australian dollars a month. Yes, our salaries in Thailand, for instance, we're paying these people twenty to thirty thousand dollars a year. Annika, as she's Thailand. asked to be called, says foreign-based cabin crew are under immense pressure. Asian-based crew aren't unionised, and they're constantly threatened with the non-renewal of their contracts should they speak out about anything to do with their jobs. And there's an extraordinary financial disincentive not to speak out. If Thai-based crew quit their jobs early or are sacked they can be forced to pay back up to four and a half months of their base wage. In its statement to Lateline, Jetstar also said, Some of our international cabin crew are required to pay a bond as a compensation for investment in training if a cabin crew member leaves within two years of employment. This is a locally based arrangement that reflects the local market conditions. On April the 22nd, Five Thai-based crew, exhausted from a series of domestic and international flights, pulled out of a flight between Sydney and Melbourne, citing fatigue. They were concerned they wouldn't be able to respond to an emergency situation should one arise. In response, they got this letter from their employer, Tour East Thailand, threatening them with the sack. Whilst illness, etc., is accepted by your employer, poor time management is not. TET requires from you an undertaking that you will not repeat these behaviours in the workplace. This letter castigated the crew members for causing damage to the reputation of their employer, Tour East Thailand, who hire cabin crew for Jetstar. But Tour East Thailand is unlikely to lose its contract with Jetstar. Qantas owns 37% of Tour East Thailand. I think to say that we're offshoring is completely false. We're growing in Asia and we're creating new jobs and we're doing it from a base that's a very successful airline started in Australia.